and hey. favourite celebrities. Oh. Just want to touch base. Paired up with an expert. So. Boom! What? <laughs> and a classic car. No hand! Their mission to scar Britain for antiques. My office. Now, the aim to make the biggest profit at auction, but it's no easy ride. <laughs> Who will find a hidden gem? Like that. Who will take the biggest oh. risk? This could end in disaster. Will anybody follow expert <laughs> advice? But I love this. How would you buy something you're not going to use? <laughs> there will be worthy winners and valiant losers. No, I don't want to shake hands. Put your pedal to the metal. Uh, let me get out of first gear. This is the Celebrity Antiques Road Trip. Today we're giving birth to a brand new road trip. Push, push, in the southeast of England with Call the Midwife stars Cliff Parisi and Judy Parfit. <laughs> what are your clever things that you're going to buy? What, oh, no, what no, are you see, interested in? No, you're asking me to talk to the enemy now. You, my friend, today, yes. although we're friends right now, yes. as soon as you get out of this car, no, we'll friend all, finish, my we'll, friend. We'll always be friends, but yes. I'll be the most successful friend. <laughs> Fighting talk. I like it. Best known as Mechanic Minty in EastEnders, Cliff can now be seen as handyman Fred in hit series Call the Midwife. Hopefully he won't need to call on his character's car fixing skills today as they are motoring around in this 1965 Ford Zodiac. Built before seatbelt became mandatory means they aren't fitted, which is why they're not wearing any. <laughs> Do you know my dad had one of these? And when I was a small boy, I used to sit in the back of it and we used to go and see my grandfather. And I've got a, a, a photograph somewhere of my little sister when she was just born in we were all in the car. Yeah. Really? Yeah, one of these, exactly. That. So this is quite nice, this is quite an event for me. Cliff's co-star, Judy Parfit, has been a leading lady of screens, both silver and small, for almost 60 years, racking up around 150 credits. I'm on the lookout for something unusual, rather like you. <laughs> <laughs> What are you going to look for? Ooh, I think I'm just going to do a collection of bedpans. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't let your experts hear that, Cliff. Road trip regulars, antique gurus Philip Searle and Catherine Southern will be guiding our celebrities on their journey. They're in this rather smart 1965 Jaguar Mark II. Whoa, isn't this a car? Well, it would be better if you could drive him properly. Cheeky devil, coming from you, that is rich. I'm so excited about today. Really? Because... Are you a fan? Oh, my goodness. Call the Midwife has to be my ultimate favourite programme. It just makes me happy. Aww. The programme leaves me warm inside. Ah, isn't that nice? Bit like this show, then. <laughs> Starting with £400 in their pockets, our teens will be touring Kent, affectionately known as the Garden of England. They'll make various shopping pit stops all over this glorious county before heading to Dis in Norfolk for auction. Dis is going to be amazing. Get the hot towels. Come on, then. I'm so excited. <laughs> Hi, lovely. How are you? <laughs> lovely to meet Hello. you. Yeah, lovely to meet you. We're both great fans of the show. We love this show. Yes. Really? Yes. yes. We'll soon change that. <laughs> I know you won't, Phil. <laughs> Judy's pairing up with Joker Cyril, which leaves Cliff and Catherine to join forces. Bye. OK, Catherine. Right. Show me what this thing does. This is much better. our oyster. We can buy whatever ever we want. I think you're going to spend it all. No, I love antique shops. My wife has to drag me out of them. I'm constantly in them, bringing them bits of furniture. I went, last, I went out to get some milk the other week and I came back with a piano, so <laughs> who knows what's going to happen today. Do you like driving this car? I love cars. Um, yeah, this is a lovely car to drive as well. Oh. Yeah, I love old cars. I think if you do my job, you just love old things generally, you know? It's just... Oh, you'll be all right with me then. Oh, shut up. <laughs> I have to ask you about your midwife, because I am the biggest fan in the country. 
Oh, that's so fabulous. kind. It's so a great kind. program, isn't it? it it's a great program. It. And we love it. We love making it. We're all, we're all incredibly protective and very proud of the show. We're like a family, and it's great. I think the initial it was six episodes, and then this extraordinary reaction. I mean, we're now working on the seventh series, and we have um, 11 and a half million viewers, that's not which is, shabby, is incredible. It? Yeah. So is Sister Monica Joan, our Judy, I get the impression she's she's oh, going to she want to win. Oh, yeah, she wants to win. Oh, no, we both want to win. We've got a little side bet going on. She's got to make me tea for the next six months if she, if she doesn't win. <laughs> Judy and Phil's first shop of the day is Barham in the Kent Downs. I just want something quirky and unusual. I'm sat here. And, and, and this was a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> They've arrived at Stablegate Antiques, a family-run business. This shop is packed with delights for Judy and Phil to pour over. Oh, this looks promising. There's some jolly good things in here, aren't there? Yeah, I like the look of that, Phil. That telescope? Yeah. Catherine's an expert in these, you know. Oh, well, I came with the wrong person. Well, you're absolutely <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. There's many have said that. <laughs> ah, you don't want to believe that. Oh. I like the pug, Phil. Oh, he's gorgeous. He's isn't he? lovely. He's gorgeous. Now, he doesn't look like he's got much age. No. I think you'd need to buy that for between 60 and 80 pounds to do any good with that. Oh, well, it's 195, so we're not start, going to be start saving. Doing start that. Saving. I think the furniture is beyond our purse. This is pretty. It is beyond our budget, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> we're about <laughs> 3,050 quid shy of that. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> step away from the pricey pieces. That leather-covered telescope is cheaper. It's an interesting thing, isn't it? Yes. It's old, too, and this beautiful leather. And look at the stitching down there. It's got a great there. colour, hasn't it? Yes. It's lovely. And how much is that? It's 120. E. D. Gannon there. Well, I is guess, that good? Well, I guess that might be the person who owned it. Right. I'm guessing. And then round here, look, at J. Coombs of Devonport. So you kind of think this might be naval? Uh, circa 1870. Uh, I think it's probably a little bit later than that, actually. Do but you? It, yeah, I do, but I think it's just quite a nice thing. And one of the reasons why I think it's later is just, by the way, this sort of script here. Right. But I think it's a nice thing. While Judy and Phil consider the telescope, Cliff and Catherine are busy making their way to Bagham Cross near Canterbury. So what will we find in Kent that we won't find anywhere else? Who knows? I think we just got to go with the flow. I'm quite happy just to look at and buy anything, really. Yeah. As long as I like the look of it. Yeah, that sounds good to me. I'm going to kind of need you to police me, though, because, you know, I'll, I'll probably give them twice as much as what it's worth. So you're going to need to look, watch out to make sure that I'm not paying too much for stuff. Right, OK. Is that a deal? That is a deal. They've arrived at their first shop and are raring to go. Pretty. I can't get out of the car. You're going to have to Lift get that me that button. <laughs> Squeeze it. Oh, it. you need a bit of oomph. I'm not strong enough. Right, let's go look-see. Situated in a beautifully restored 17th century barn, there's plenty of antiques here. Look at this. Lovely. Welcome to Backham Barn. I'm Peggy. Oh, get out of my antique shop. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Peggy. Thank you. <laughs> Good one, Cliff. Right, introduction's over. Time to get browsing. Well, look at that, look. It turns into a table and a toilet. <laughs> Don't wind me up. <laughs> I think that is absolutely dinky. I can imagine the children playing with this and call the midwife, actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe we could sell it to them. Can we take the glasses off? Scramble! No. Oh, I'm never going to get in that plane. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get in the cockpit. <laughs> oh, that's a bit tight. That's Naughty. After a good old rummage, it looks like Cliff's inner child has found something to play with. It's a Mark I Ford Escort. It's made by Dinky. I've never seen one before. And it's in really good condition. 35 quid. We could get we could get a sort of collection of them. Or do you should just we, let should that we do one? a little lot? Should we do yeah. if we can get that one? 
This is quite good. Look at this. And it's got an ambulance. Oh, a little ambulance. It's got an ambulance driver oh, in it. Oh, with a little driver. Oh, he's and nice. It's got, oh. it's got patient. <laughs> it's got patient in the back. She's having a baby. Come on, the midwife. <laughs> Shove her in. Yeah. Come on, get back on the bed. There you there go. You are. Come, we'll oh, I think it's a have him, you. actually. It's pregnant, him. whoever it is. It's pregnant. We'll soon have you in the hospital. In. There you are. Oh, you know, you know. Should we get that, that as well? Wonderful. How yeah. That? How much is that? Twenty-two. Oh, let's get that. The combined ticket price for the three, eighty-two pounds. Time to talk to dealer Paul. Paul, is there anything we can do on these? Uh, what are you like... looking at? The three together. Yeah. What about fifty? I can do fifty for you if that helps. Happy with that? Yeah, I'm happy with that. Thank you. You're welcome. I better put... Gosh, you've got a firm shake. Have you always broke my hand? <laughs> I will be... I'll be the next patient in there. I better pay you. While Cliff and Catherine are busy buying cars back in Barham, Judy and Phil have cornered dealer Gay to inquire about the telescope they fancy. What's your very best um... on that? It's up at one... One twenty. One twenty. Am I going to tell you what I think it's worth, or do you want to yeah, tell us? No, no, you tell Well, I think me. we've got to try and buy it for around £50, £55. Pounds. That's where I would see it. But, there's a, but you, while you're thinking about that, mm. I know that with all your beautiful things in here, yes. you must have a workshop or a store somewhere that might have some hidden little gems in it. We have a little next-door nook. Oh, wow. Aha. Uh -huh. Time for a good nosy in the nook, eh? <laughs> I like that. Just an old waste paper bin. That's quite yeah. cool, isn't it? Yeah. I bet that's no money at all, is it? No. Yeah. Five I ten, like it. Five or ten quid? Yeah. <laughs> Would you take five pounds for that? I'd take ten. Ten. Can we afford ten? We can save up, can't we? Is there anything else in here? I don't know. What have you seen? I quite like that table. That's a nice table. How much is the table? The asking price for that, I think... Oh, no, no, not the asking price. <laughs> She's lovely, the... <laughs> <laughs> Not the asking price. Well... The price you're going to be kind enough to give us. The asking price was 120 but we could drop to... 60 quid. I'm just going to say 70 Shall we have a look at that? Let's have a look at it. That looks weighty. Mind you, don't do yourself a mischief, Philip. I think it's Indian. You see, you lift that up. That is so heavy. This is made out of Paduk. What's that? It's a really heavy um, sort of equatorial hardwood that you can't sort of even drive nails into it. It is rock, rock hard. Really? The, the problem with it is, and it is a problem, somebody has just cleaned this top off. This has had Botox and a facelift. <laughs> OK? Doesn't look natural. No, and this looks as though it's varnished to me. Yeah, it's been treacled up to the nines. I don't think I want to buy it. I think it's not a bad example of what it is, actually. I think if you could get the two for 70 quid, I think you'd be all right. Whatever you say. Well, no, you're the boss you're the, boss. No, you're the expert. Don't you call me that. What do you just say? <laughs> <laughs> it's down to you, Judy. Please, can I have the two for 70 quid? <laughs> <laughs> How about 75? There we are. I can't... I mean, that is a, is a good price for... Should we leave the telescope? Well, I don't know. What price are you thinking of the telescope? £30 for the telescope? No, no I can't do 30 Can't you? Do Could you do all three, three for 110 quid? Yes, all right, Really? Well, I think you've done remarkably well. Well, there you well. go. Thank You're an angel. Do you know what? You've I done know. this really, really well. Yes. Yeah. I've got one other nice favour as well. Um, have you got a damp cloth I could borrow, please? Yes. Thank you. For you or the table? Ah, there's a thought. Now, some very kind discounts mean Judy and Phil have bought the Paduke Anglo-Indian table for £65, the leather telescope for 35 and the 19th century waste paper bin for a tenner, all in their first shop. That's marvellous. No, don't worry, Judy, I'm fine, honestly. You can I've manage. Got above. Manage? Poor old boy's had it. Back in Bagham Cross, Cliff's hunt continues. You know, my granddad used to have this case with um, lots of little knickknacks in it and things like this and all that kind of stuff, it, little curios, and I really like those. Look, a cake plate for very tiny cakes. No time for a tea break just yet, Cliff. Catherine's found something she thinks you'll like. 
So I saw this. I can't actually lift this. I need a big, strong man like you to lift this. Oh, here you go. He's, he's like, this is so light. <laughs> Cast iron? Yeah. Beware of trains. So that's, God, that's Scottish. Really Scottish. Is it? How do you know? CR. Caledonian Railways. Oh, OK. This should be Och. No. Och, Bach, Bach, the trains. <laughs> Dear, accents aren't her strong suit. Anyway, she's found a nice looking vintage railway lamp. Look at that. Okay. <laughs> right. But, okay, 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 okay. So, this is going to go across to two different people, isn't it? This is going to go across to your people who are interested in it for a railway honour type of mm -hmm. thing. And also your people who are interested in it as a sort of decorative thing to have in the garden. Choo choo. The railway lamp is priced at £65. The railway sign is £140. What's your best then, Paul? Two together, the, the cast iron of the lamp, bottom price would be a straight 100 What about 90 90 As we bought You'd your be lovely doing cars. That right. As you bought the dinky toys as well. Deal. Lovely. Are you happy with that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A nice bit of bargaining from Cliff bags them the 1940s railway sign for £65 and the vintage railway lamp for £25. Top notch, I'd say. Judy and Phil are taking a detour from shopping and heading to Dover. Somebody once told me there's a massive difference between being Kent and Kentish. Kentish is sort of almost like the London side of Kent. Oh, right, right, right. And a man of Kent is more the hot fields and yes. darling bloods of May and all yes, that sort of yes. stuff. Before the Royal Navy was formed in the 16th century, local mariners were once this country's first line of defence. Five ports on the southeast coast maintained a fleet of ships that the monarch could call upon at any time to defend England from attack. Known as the Sink Ports, or sank ports, Hastings, Romney, Hythe, Dover and Sandwich played a key role in the development of Great Britain as a naval superpower. It's here at Dover Castle that Len Howell from English Heritage has the story. Hello, I'm Judy. Hello, hello, hello. I'm, I'm Len. Welcome Philip, to Dover Castle and Dover, one of the sink ports. Why is it called sink ports? Because there were five of them, basically. It goes back to the, the French word sank, sink. One of the visitors to the castle actually said that that is Norman French rather than High French, oh, wow. so that it's sink rather than sank. In 1066, William, Duke of Normandy, sailed across the Channel with his army and invaded. England offered little naval resistance and the vulnerability of the coast was clear. So, when William the Conqueror took to the throne, he prioritised the creation of coastal defences at five key points along the southeast of England, naming them Sink Ports. The purpose of the Sink Ports yep. was to provide protection yep. for royalty. Doing what? Why? Who it was from? providing ships is the, the prime function here. There was no Royal Navy then. Mm. If you were involved in fighting at sea, you needed experienced mariners to be able to do that. Before they started, you'd have hired mercenaries. Yeah. But they became an established idea that it was probably cheaper and more convenient to have a range of ports that were obliged to give you service in return for certain privileges that those ports then gained from the Crown. What did they get back? A lot. They had many tax benefits um, and they had the right to control their own laws. There were financial benefits and kudos benefits that came to the sink portsmen. How long were the sink ports in operation? They were very active during the 11th century. Um, the 12th century was coming to their heyday and the early 13th century. But after the 13th started to go on, they began to decline in their influence and their importance, especially as the provision of ships for the monarch. But certainly by the time we get to the end of the 15th century, when Henry VII comes to the phone, he's actually building purpose-built warships. Sink ports proved effective and successful. The Battle of Sandwich in 1217 was one of the most important naval engagements of the time. Sink port ships destroyed a much larger French fleet intent on invading England. 
The Cinque Ports were last called upon in 1588 to provide defence against the Spanish Armada. And who was uh, in charge? The most important person within the Cinque Ports um, was generally considered to be the Lord Warden, which was the monarch's representative within the, the um, Cinque Ports Federation themselves. The Lord Warden and Admiral of the Sink Ports and Constable of Dover Castle was once one of the most powerful officials in the kingdom. So these are the arms of almost a thousand years worth yeah. of wardens. Yeah, exactly, yes. How um, many is there? Some lasted not very long, but a lot were Lord Warden for 10, 20, 30 years. And what do they have to do? Basically, they are the monarch's representative. These days, they represent the Sink Ports at certain functions. If you go back, they were taking control of a lot of the courts of the sink ports, dealing with different matters, mostly maritime matters. But these days, it is just a, a figurehead for the, the sink port association themselves. Very roughly, at what day did this change from becoming operative to titular? Well, certainly by the time we get to the beginning of the 15th century, it definitely was then, because the importance of the fleet as a fighting force is recognised as being slipping away. Over the centuries, the office has been bestowed upon prime ministers and distinguished wartime leaders like the Duke of Wellington and Sir Winston Churchill. The only woman to have ever held the office is the Queen Mother. Although few of their ancient privileges survive today, Cinque Ports played an important and often violent role in developing the nation's seafaring and naval traditions. Thank you very much. It's been, You've been absolutely Thank you. fascinating. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very Your much. enthusiasm is very catchy. Thank you very much indeed. Thank Shall we head out? Further along the coast, Cliff and Catherine are about to invade another of the sink ports, the small coastal town of Hythe. With £260 still to spend, they've arrived at the Malt House, an antique centre with 25 dealers under one roof. Look at that. They're a bit specialist. A bit specialist. Toys. I can't bear any more toy cars. <gasps> That's the proper call the midwife dress. That's tiny. We've bought boys' things. Yeah, let's get something girly. So maybe silver, maybe jewellery. Something a bit posh, a bit with posh. a bit of age to it, but quality. Top right, notch. like that. Top, top, notch, top notch. Like us. Like us. There you go. Sparkly. Come and look. Sparkly, sparkly. What do you think of that lot, then? What do you think of that lot, then? How much is that lot? <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Don't worry, Ali. He's just pulling your leg. That's nice. Arts and crafts. Arts and crafts, little bowl. Bonbon dish. Yeah. It's quite stylish. Yeah. And it's quite weighty. But how much is on that? £98. That's not £98 for us. I can come down. We like people that come down. What about this pair of um, trumpet vases? I think I've got... What have I got on them? These are sort of 1930s, are they? They're, they're mm. older than that. That one looks very... Can you see that? That's a little bit worn at the top. What I like is the start. They're quite simple in yeah. their design. That's why I thought they were 30s. Are they really much earlier? I think they're about 1919. 1919. I could do them for 60. They have Sometimes got kind of a look of deco, haven't they? Exactly, yeah. which is why I think yeah. they're more sort yeah. of tw late 20s, early I like 30s. Them. I think they're really nice. That's two possibles. But is there a third piece of silver in the offing, too? This is quite nice, isn't it? Little pin tray. William Cummins. William Cummins. Oh, William Cummins. You know him? Good friend of yours? Mm, sorry. Well, I mean, in the name of, in the name of Smalls, Silver he's Smalls, he's, he's, a, he's a pretty good name. He's up there. But what's lovely about this, being heart-shaped, a little pin tray, it's all repoussé, so it's all been sort of hammered from the back to create this lovely little pattern. And you've got little... Love birds and little lovely swags on the dressing table. And yeah. There. Is and it's actually got quite a nice clear hallmark there. So that is B, so that's about 1901, 1902. Yep. And what's um what what have you got on that? I can do the best I can do on that is 40. What do you think? Looks to me like I haven't got my glasses on, but it looks like someone's been hitting that with a hammer. But I I take your word this for it. This is quality <laughs> silversmithing. <laughs> 
So what's the best deal you can give us for all three? I could do 110 for the three pieces. I think we should buy it. What? All of it. All, all of it? All of it. Let's take do the you? lot. You're a bit of a gambler, aren't you? OK, so we're going to buy the trumpet vases. Yeah. The arts and crafts. Bowl. Bonbon dish. Yeah. And the William Cummins tray, which you didn't like. Yes, it's lovely. You hate it, don't you? No, no, it's nice. It's nice. It's, it's nice, <laughs> isn't it? It is lovely. Cliff may not be completely sold, but they're going for it anyway. That's a bargain, £30 for the pin dish, £40 for the trumpet vases and another 40 for the bonbon dish. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> After a busy day of buying, it's time for our weary celebrities and experts to have a well-earned rest. So, nighty-night. It's the next morning. Cliff and Judy are back together and making their way to Cliff's End to meet their experts. Phil was wonderful and very helpful to me. Was he? Yes, he was. He was absolutely lovely. Because, you know, he did exactly what I wanted him to do. <laughs> Everybody does what you want them to do, Judy. <laughs> Otherwise, there's trouble. <laughs> Judy is a buying machine. I would not want to play cards with her, because there's just this completely Poker expressionless face. face. That's what I'll offer you for it. Catherine thought I was marvellous. She thought I had a brilliant eye, and <laughs> and I was instinctive, possibly <laughs> a touch too instinctive. It's a good chat, but buying, shopping, it's a big no-no. <laughs> really? Because he just goes in and he says, "Yeah, we'll have that. Should we have that as well and that?" If I'd have let him. We would have bought everything. So, Cliff and Catherine have already bought five lots to take to auction. The vintage dinky cars, the 1940s railway sign, the vintage railway lamp, the heart-shaped pin dish and the pair of trumpet vases and bonbon dish, leaving them a £150 purse. Don't wind me up. <laughs> Meanwhile, Judy and Phil have bought three things. The leather telescope, the 19th century waste paper pin, and the Paduk table. Can we afford 10? We can save up, can't we? Which means they still have £290 available to spend. Do you know what I'm going to be looking for today? No. I'm going to give you a little tip. All right. Orange 70s plastic. Orange 70s. My idea of hell. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, Orange is not my favourite colour. Well, it's very 70s. And 70s, Orange, purple. I lived through it. I don't have to go back there. Oh, I remember you in the 70s, yes, Judy. Yes, I was amazing. Ooh. You still are. Look what happened. You're still just as wonderful as you were, Judy. Well, give it a look. They're raring to go again. Good morning. 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 The other two are getting away. Get your motor running. Get out of the highway. Looking for adventure. Hey, whatever comes my way. Oi, oi. <laughs> You're such a friendly guy, you are, aren't you? You've got this massive, oh, right. massive cheeky smile, oh, right. and that is just how you are. That's, that is who you play oh, right. and call the midwife. Oh, right. Ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> While Cliff's busy making friends with the locals, Judy and Phil are making their way to the seaside town of Ramsgate. You've been a career actress, haven't you? Well, I think so. <laughs> Which was the role that got away? 
that oh. you wish you'd played? I played Mary Queen of Scots in Vivat Vivat Regina in London. Yeah. Uh, which was wonderful. She was an amazing woman. I loved doing it. But basically, my heart's always been Elizabeth I. Right. And I've done it on radio, but I've never played her, and I've always wanted to play Elizabeth I. And the parts that got away are endless, because Judy Dench plays all the parts I want to play. So you could have been M. I could. You could. I and did. I could have been Bond. <laughs> There's no need to laugh, Judy. There's no need to laugh. I can see it now. The name Cyril. Phil Cyril. Secret Agent Cyril and Jay have arrived at Petticoat Lane Emporium. Shall we go and tear the place apart? Let's go and find treasure. With loads of dealers' stalls packed to the gunnels with antiques and vintage goods, they're sure to find something, aren't they? Judy. Yes? Do you think this is my colour? Oh, I think it's wonderful, but uh, have you got the arms for it? Yeah, I don't think I've got anything for it. <laughs> Look. <laughs> Just in Judy. case I forget my name. <laughs> Judy. What you, Judy and Cliff. Oh, Judy and Cliff. It's got a ring to it, hasn't it? It has. Yeah. But not one I would like to wear. Put it down. What is it? <laughs> Judy, what is this? I don't know. What is it? It looks like a straight jacket for a very tall person. That rules me out. <laughs> I think you'll find it's a canvas and wood mountain rescue stretcher from the 50s. That's just what it is. It's a stretcher, isn't it? Yeah, it's a stretcher. Told you so. Probably for very thin ill people as well. <laughs> you can get fat ill people on there, But I think, that, I think that unfurls. They, they unfurl there, don't they? Is there a label that gives us a bit of a clue? It says, a vintage mountain <laughs> rescue stretcher. Oh. My Rare. God. You can't argue with that, can no. you? <laughs> <laughs> I, think we, I think somebody might need that now. Yeah. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think we should have a go at that. I think that's Do you fine. really? With the right price. The stretcher is a possibility. No mountains around here, though. Time to split up. I don't know why I always seem to gravitate towards trunks. Looks like Judy likes them, too. It's a silver chest rather than a trunk. So, in the 18th and 19th centuries, you would keep the family silver in a large trunk or chest like this. With some glass over the top, it make a, a nice coffee table or a storage thing. I think that's a good thing. But you could turn that into a really cool coffee table. Um, make a great kids dressing up box or toy box. I wonder if she'd like that. I reckon so, mate. But there's only one way to find out for sure. I just like this old trunk, you know? Um, or a silver chest. Um, it's, it's a thing easy, it's 195 quid, which is a bit punchy. How old do you think that is? Uh, I would think that's probably about 1850, 1860. Can I show you what I've just seen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, what do you think of this? <laughs> I, love, mm -hmm. I love that. That's quite yeah. cool. So, which do you think is the better one? How much is that one? 110. Well, I'm already drawn to that one because it's, it's like Pretty. half the money almost. Yes. It says Southampton, 11th of July, 63. A.A. A. Blackman. They settle on Judy's trunk and that £45 mountain rescue thingamajig. Let's talk money with dealer Zach. Zach? I'd like to have a look at this and the mountain rescue thing. It's sort of 65 quid, really. That's where I... For the lot? For both. Yeah, both. Yeah. 80 on, on, the, on the two. The 70 quid will shake your hand. 75. Toss a coin? Yes. OK, and what's it between? 70 or 80? 70 and 75. OK, all right. Yeah. Tails. So if it's tails, it's 75. No, heads. Heads, it's 75, and tails, it's 70, yeah? Yeah. It's the tail. Uh, never change your mind. There you go. You're there you go. It's a four. You're a star, mate. All right. Thank you very much. No worries. Thank you very, pleasure. Much. Thank Thank you. You very much. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That toss of the coin secures them the late Victorian trunk for £50 and the vintage stretcher for £20. <laughs> Meanwhile, our other duo are making their way to Manston, where Catherine has a treating store for aviation fanatic Cliff. 
So you are an amateur pilot? I am. What can you fly? Rockets? Commercial A-lights? Two by two? Little two? One seater? Four seater. Four-seater. Four -seater. That is impressive. But I'm not fully qualified yet, so I'm not allowed to take you up without another pilot being with me. But I can go up right. solo on my own. Oh, yes. So you've not got your licence yet? Or you no. Not quite? No. I'm really impressed with you being a, a pilot. Uh, sorry? Captain. Captain Cliff. Commander, please. Oh, Commander. Commander Cliff. Commander of my own aircraft. Oh. I should say so. Captain. With Wing Commander Cliff's passion for aviation in mind, Catherine's taking him on a detour to find out about an unsung hero of the Battle of Britain. They come to the Manston Spitfire and Hurricane Memorial Museum to hear all about the aircraft's history from trust manager Matt Dumet. Hi Hello, there. Hi, Hi, Catherine. Thanks nice for having us here. Wow. Hi, nice I'm Cliff. How are you? Hello, Cliff. Look at that. A major air campaign fought over southern England in the summer and autumn of 1940, the Battle of Britain was one of the most important victories of the Second World War. When people think of this crucial campaign, it's the supermarine Spitfire that normally springs to mind. But the Hawker Hurricane was, in fact, the principal fighter of the Battle of Britain, with 19 squadrons of Spitfires compared to 32 with Hurricanes. For as Michael Caine used to say, not a lot of people know that. Now, the reason it's less known is because, for lack of a better word, it's not as sexy, as they say in aircraft mm -hmm. terminology. The Spitfire would be a racehorse. This aircraft is really a draft horse. This is doing the majority of the work. The advantage of the Hurricane, first of all, there being more of them, but also it's a far more reliable gun platform, very sturdy aircraft. So what they used to do is Hurricane pilots would attack bombers or German bomber formations, the aim of dispersing or shooting down as many German aircraft before they reached their targets. Even though the Hurricanes shot down more aircraft than all other air and ground defences put together, its achievements are eclipsed by the Spitfire's speed, graceful silhouette and romantic legend. So what was the main difference in construction between the Hurricane and the Spitfire? The Hurricane is made of a mixture of materials, so wood and canvas for the rear section and an aluminium for the front section. The Spitfire, uh, being a later aircraft, was designed entirely and built entirely out of aluminium. But what they found with the Hurricane is because of its simpler design, it was easier to repair and fix during combat situations. So indeed, if, you were to, if, a, if a German round went through the Hurricane, it was simply a matter of patching up, as you would do with almost a bit of clothing, really. Whereas if there was any damage to a Spitfire, it's a whole panel that has to come off, specialized tools and that sort of thing. What was the ratio be, be, in, during the Battle of Britain between Allied planes and enemy aircraft? There's roughly 800 aircraft ready for action on the RAF side. The German Luftwaffe is attacking the RAF with well over 1,400, so 1,400 aircraft of different types. That said, uh, the main advantage that the RAF has is that all 800 are fighters. Obviously, a great majority of the German aircraft are bombers. During the Battle of Britain, the Luftwaffe was dealt an almost lethal blow from which it never fully recovered. Much of this success was thanks to the Hurricane and, of course, their brave pilots. When Britain faced attack, the pilots would be ordered to scramble. Every second counted and they had less than five minutes to kit up and get into their planes. It was no mean feat and flying fan Cliff reckons he's up for the challenge. Are you ready? I'm ready. Three, two, one. Scramble! Oh. Come on, come on. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on, scramble, a bit quicker, quicker. We're already getting past 15 seconds oh. there. Oh. That's oh. right, all right, keep going. Oh, it's going to be too small for you. Quick, quick, quick. Where's me May West? Oh. Quick, me May West, I'm not falling a drink. Scramble, scramble, come quick, on! Quick, quick, quick. Oh. We, can, we can hear, I can already hear them arriving. Come here, here we go. Give me, give me. Oh, I've got it. There he's there and he's gone. You've Excellent. left your boots. <laughs> they, they went without me. <laughs> Victory at the Battle of Britain was key to the overall outcome of the war, in which the mighty Hawker Hurricane played a crucial role. Listen, thank you so much. It's been thank you. brilliant and educational, fabulous. And thank you for bringing me here. I've had a lovely time. <laughs> thank you. Thank I you. Think, I think you missed the boat. I, I missed the plane. So <laughs> yeah.
For their last spot of shopping before heading to auction, both teams are making their way to Faversham. Judy and Phil are first to arrive at Aladdin's loft with £220 in their pocket. Based in a 17th century monk's granary, there are a huge range of antiques here. So we're in a very, very lucky position, you know, really. We, yeah. Because we bought five things. Yeah. We didn't really want to buy anything else. We, if, but if we could, yeah. if we could add something to a lot, right. we could buy it. But if we don't see it, we won't. I'm more concerned about where the other lot are. What do you think they are? Right, mind your head. Fret not, old bean. They're bringing up the rear. With six items already bought, they have £150 available to spend. Here we go. <sighs> well, that's pretty... Nice but little pearl necklace. We don't it? need it, do we? Bracelet, rather. Ideally, what would be wonderful would be to find a little car or a little transporter yeah. or something to go with our weaker lot, mm. which I think is probably what? the car. Sorry, not weaker. Oh, the best our lot. Fabulous lots. Mm. The problem is we could do more harm than good. We could be buying some things just for the sake of buying them and then adding them to our stuff and then it kind of ruins them. Oh, this is cool, isn't it, look? Travel bar. Yeah. £95. £95. But it, it doesn't go with anything we No, can, it's a very it? cool thing. <laughs> you like that? And then you put your shoes, your platform shoes, at the end. <laughs> what are you doing? That's the way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've got your duty now, you've got your punch. Yes. You found something. Buses. What, real buses? Pull aboard. Oh, I like them. Oh, there are a couple of trams there. A little there. tram. I like the trams. That looks quite new to me. Yeah, reject that one. Don't want that one. Davey T, gosh. Oh, aren't they wonderful, the old trams? That's wonderful. <laughs> really bashed, though, isn't it? Seriously yeah. bashed. I don't think they're up to much, to be honest with you. Oh, look at that. Here's trouble. Yeah, there's trouble. Oh, there's trouble. here comes oh, the enemy. Yeah. Did you find anything lovely? Of course. Yeah, oh, actually, you've been bombed yeah. out with really, really good things, isn't yeah. it? Really? Yeah. Have you? We've been very lucky. We were done yesterday, weren't yeah, we? Yeah, we were really just... wrapped up yesterday. We've just come to find you to see if you fancy going for a, some refreshment. Drinky poos. Mm, I think so. Yeah, come on. Yeah. So I never realised there were two versions of the Mona Lisa until we bought that one, did you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Philip. So it looks like neither team fancied a flutter in the final shop. Thank you very much for being such good. Actually, I'll drink tomorrow. We've such, had such a wonderful good time. pair. Come on. Cheers, cheers. So here's cheers. lots of money. This is what this show should be all about. Just sitting here yeah. with yeah. a bit of water in the background. Beautiful Kim. Sun shining. A conveyor belt with sort of antiques being moved in front of us. And you can just go, oh, no. Pick out the one. No, yeah, no I'll have that yeah. one. Oh, yeah. that one. If you that remembered one. them, yeah. you could have everyone yeah. that you remembered as oh, it yeah. went round. And then you could call it the generation game or something, like novel That's like that. That's clever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And on that note, finish your drinks. It's time for a spot of show and tell. Ta-da! Oh, cricket. No, what no, is that? It's a hell of a set of cricket pads, though. <laughs> I don't know. Bear in mind that the auction is probably in the flattest oh, part of, of England. This it. is a mountain rescue stretcher. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> so we think there's going to be a big demand yeah. for that in East yeah. Anglia. I like it. I think that's really interesting. I don't think you'd fit on it. <laughs> so this, yeah, was, this was £20. Yes. I thought you were going to say 200 then. No, no, I was, I was almost on that stretcher. Right. And then... Oh, this. Catherine, this is Very right. nice. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Trunk which Judy found and did a fantastic Lovely. one. Oh, that's good. Very good. Our waste paper bin was a tenner. I really like that. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I yeah. actually yeah. really like that. I yeah. think that's it's so cool. But our table, which is in Padukud, and it's Anglo Indian, and I think that was really, well, really that's a really good. Oh, we're in trouble. That's <laughs> a, sh that is very. <laughs> no, he was wonderful. He insisted on that. Uh, yeah. Do you like it? No. no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, uh, I see exactly what he's saying. I think yeah. you've done brilliantly. Mm. Come, Come on. on. We, on the other hand. <laughs> da, 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 da. I love the lantern. Oh, oh I love oh. the train sign. Yeah. Oh, you've got great things. We did spend quite a bit, didn't we? Yeah, we did spend. So, quite how a much bit. was that? Because I know th those go for a lot of money. £200? No, it wasn't. I think we worked it out because we got this in a little deal. Right. So we've split that to 65. That's right. it. That, that, you'll that's make money on that. And that to 25. You'll make money on both yeah. of those. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But what we really love is our little cars. Yeah, and look at this. Look. 
this one, talking about your stretcher, if you open the back here... We could put it in there. No, it's got a little stretcher and a little... Oh, look. A little pregnant lady, look. <laughs> How do you know she's pregnant? But it's not, it's a man, but you know, he's gonna be pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> Just go with the theme. Yeah. So you sorry. put him in the back there and he goes, Take me to take me to the Nata's house, I'm having a baby. <laughs> oh. There you go. We're gonna just wander off and we'll catch you at the auction. Yes. Okay. So you're at the auction. Come on, you. Come on. Right, out of earshot. What do they really make of each other's lots? What do you think of the Cliff's toys? Well, they're boys' toys, aren't they? Those yeah. they'll always sell, won't they? But I don't know how well, much. Well, it's how money. much. That's the thing, yeah. isn't it? We've got one silly lot, which I love. I love our which silly lot. the lots. cars. Yeah. And they've got a really silly lot, which is that stretcher. So, are you still you got that confidence? Yes. Would you swap yes, any of our bits for theirs? No. It'll be interesting to see how we do it in the auction now, won't it? Put it there, son. Put it there. Thank you. After starting in Chartham Hatch, our teams have shopped up around Kent and Judy and Cliff and are now motoring towards Dis in Norfolk for the big finale. Have you, is that your lucky hat? I haven't seen that hat This before. is my lucky hat. I always wear this at, at auctions. Oh, how many have you been to? None. Haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> I've been to lots of auctions. I love auctions. Oh, you're very experienced, yes. are you? You I feeling confident? Dead. I'm feeling um, excited, but I'm certainly not confident, cos I suspect that you might win. Oh, but really? I think you've got probably more saleable things. Possibly, because yeah. they're silver and people like yeah. silver, but we did pay a lot a lot for some stuff, you know. Anyway, but you do realise, Judy, you are not allowed to bid on this stuff. <laughs> so don't start going like that, Gavin. <laughs> I was going to bid for my own stuff. Or, or where I can't see you putting your, <laughs> putting your little finger up, cos I'll be watching you. Ditto. We'll be having none of that. Catherine and Phil have already arrived at T.W. Gay's auction rooms and are waiting patiently for their celebrity partners. Oh, here they are, look. Here they are. Do you think they're as excited as we are? I reckon they will. They look happy. Yeah. Hello, hello, hello. Hi. Here we are. Lovely, how are you? Hats. Hats. Great hat. Here we are. How Welcome. Are you? Hi, Good darling. to see you. Lovely to see you. <laughs> to see you. Yeah, absolutely. So we'd better go and see what we're gonna make, had we? Come yeah. on then. On this road trip, Cliff and Catherine spent £250. They're combining the trumpet vases and bonbon dish into one lot, giving them five lots for auction. Nice and cosy. What you call snug, Judy and Phil spent less, forking out £180 on their five lots. The lovely Elizabeth Talbot will be wielding the gavel today, so what does she make of our celebrities' lots? Beware of train sign, that's a great item. It's good for two things, partly because of the fact it's railway honour, and partly because it's been brought for sale in East Anglia, and East Anglians love their railway items. The Padouk table, when I saw this, I, it's very eye-catching, I do like it, but we've still got a problem with furniture. The market is very erratic still at the moment, so if people like it but have no use for it, they won't buy it, and if they don't like it, they certainly won't bid for it, so my verdict's out on that one. Right, it's the moment of truth. Time for the auction, which has buyers online and in the room. Well, good luck, because this is your first... We time. might need it. First up, it's Judy's late Victorian trunk. And I start here at £22. 20, mm. 20 pounds. No, no, you'll be fine. And it's five, 28 and 30. I have two. Surely oh, a bit more. Two. It's back with me at 32. I've lost you in the room. Any advance? 32 takes that one. I'm really surprised with that. I thought that would make more. A disappointing start for Judy. Bad luck. Well, you've got it. <laughs> well, I thought it would get much more than that. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Let's see if Cliff can fare any better with his dinky cars. He loved them, but has Catherine warmed? They look great. Start me at 20. <laughs> Anything, Anything from China? No, we've got, we're at 10. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so embarrassed. 10 pounds for three of them. And 12, I have 15. 18 is the front bid at 18, I'm out. You've got 18. 18. 18 pounds on three vehicles there at 18. Any advance? <laughs> 
we don't mind. Yeah, our trunks beginning to look quite good. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, there are no dinky lovers in dis. It's not quite a fair... Oh, I, no, can, no. I can understand your pain. Yes. Oh, Cliff, you've taken this badly. I have to deal with this for six months every year. I'm going. <laughs> Chin up, Cliff. There's still plenty of time to make a profit. Next up, it's Judy's 50s mountain rescue stretcher. Look at the state the of that. Only one, um, the only one I've ever seen. Good low start, £20. Oh, come on, someone. Yeah. I have bids at £12, looking for 15 15 is bid, but I thank you in the room at 15. Oh, there's only a bounce, it will sell. Yes. All done. Oh, that's good. Well, that's good. Well, Would you think that's good? <laughs> Have you seen this programme? The idea is we try and make money. <laughs> <laughs> and that certainly isn't happening so far. Another loss. The only way is up now. Yes. Let's hope so. It's the turn of Cliff's 1940s railway sign that our auctioneer fancied. And I start at £32. 35, 38, and 42. 45, 48, and 55. Come on, Cliff. And 65. Come on, Internet. 75. Ooh. Oh, it's chucking on. <laughs> 75 only, and 80 new bid, and 5. Ooh. 90, I have 5. Yeah. From 100, the station out the other side. One turn with me. Fine, the net is out as well. Oh. At £110, all quite ahead. £110. £110. Don't, don't be Julie, don't be pleased. Well, I'm, I'm sort of acting. No, 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 don't. Don't, act. don't be bitter. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be bitter. Now, that's a bit more like it. A fabulous profit there for Cliff. Well done. We clawed it back with that one. Indeed. Right, come on, Judy. You're playing catch up with your 19th century waste paper bin now. Eighteen pounds. Eighteen pounds is bid. It's going to do really well. And twenty-two, twenty-five, twenty-eight, thirty-two, thirty-five, thirty-eight. It's forty pounds bid. Any advance? Happy Eight. with that, Phil? Yeah. Well, it's sort of, it's just helped us a little bit, hasn't it? Fantastic return on the bin. Top marks. I, I really, really rated that. I think that's it looked so lovely up there. It did look really. I nice would have liked to have taken it home. Yeah. Well, let's hope someone wants to take home Cliff's vintage railway lamp. A good lamp there for £50. Look at that. Stands well. 50 bid. Thank you, Gallery. 50? 50. Gosh, you're a star on this. Yeah. For only £50, it's the maiden bid. Well done. I doubled your money on that. Well, that's a good little profit, isn't it? That's all right. Well done, you. The auctioneer was right. This Norfolk lot like their railway memorabilia. Have you been out practising? <laughs> You know, are you sort of, you know, round the markets and the fairs every weekend? Well, you're like, what are you fancy? Two to five, a three pound inch, can't pay now. Tops down, from switch, all the companies pay that. Hey, look at that lady. <laughs> the old man says she's had a all day, isn't it? <laughs> you were wasted as a mechanic on EastEnders, I tell you. They should have stuck you on a stall on Bridge Street. Judy's up again now with her leather telescope this time. I have 30, 32, 35. 38, I have 40. 42 is a gentleman ahead of me at 42, I'm out. And at 42, I'll take five. It's 42 pounds, 45 standing. 48, I've lost the cap. Come on, it's got to do a bit more. You know you want it. 50 new bid in the gallery at 50, more like it. 50 is more like it. It's 50 pounds with the lady. Any advance? It's a nice example. There was nothing wrong with it. It was good, it was clean, it was fresh. It might not have made as much as they'd hoped, but a profit's a profit. Well, at least we didn't lose money. No, 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 no. which is a result of us. 35 quid. The first of Cliff's silver lots now, the trumpet-shaped vases and bonbon dish. £60 pounds for all the silver. Oh, come on, surely. £40, pounds, surely, for what you have there. 40 bid, gallery is 40, I'll take two. At uh, 40 pounds, 42, 45, 48, and 50, 5 and 60. 60 is the front gallery. Ooh, we need a bit more than that. 60, I'll... Good items for 60 pounds, they will sell. Oh, that's really disappointing, actually. That's 40 quid up for how much on that? 20. Oh, that's a shame. Hard luck, Cliff. Sorry, that was my idea to buy those. Well, they were very pretty. Judy's last lot is up next. The Paduke table picked up by Phil. Start me at 100. Oh, it's all gone quiet. Yeah. The room's gone quiet. No one knows to make of it. 
No, they don't know. 70 on the net. Good. Oh, 70 oh, on my the net God. now, looking for 70. five. At 75, sir. 80 bid. 85. All of a sudden, there's someone that recognizes. 85 in the room. 90. Five. In the room at 95. The advance of 95 pounds. Oh, 100 come on. Bid on table. Oh, well done. 110. In the room at 110. The advance 110 pounds. It will sell 110. Oh, that's good. It's good. It's double, it's more than double it's really good. Judy finishes with a fabulous profit. I have absolutely no idea where we are, who's winning this or who's losing this. I have no I idea. Think we were ahead, and now I think you've just <clears throat> jumped ahead. So it does all hang on this, and you hate this, so it doesn't look good. <laughs> Here we go, the deciding lot. Can Cliff trump Judy with his heart-shaped silver pin dish? Oh, where am I safe for this one? Start me at 50. Come on, 50. 50 pounds, a charming oh, piece. On. Buy a different... 50 pounds, 40 if you will. Oh, come on. I start here at 28. 28, which is low start at 28. 30 bid, 32. 35 and I'm out. 38, the gallery, 40 come bid. On. 42, 45, wow. 48, 50. This is on my left. 50 stop commissions it. are 50 at 50 pounds bid. <laughs> I think you're just coming up to an open ditch. <laughs> Any advance on 50 pounds, it will sell. <laughs> How much profit did it make? 10 pounds. 20. 20. 20. Yeah, that did better than my cars. Cliff ends on a profit, but was it enough to win the trip? It's been like that. Oh, it's really? Really, really exciting. Absolutely riveting all the way through. We're sitting on the sea. Oh, this is selling oh, now. Oh. We better go. We're for sale. We're for sale. That's all right. It doesn't come with no. us. We're not in the lot. <laughs> well, our teams do a runner before they're sold off. Let's find out who actually won. Cliff and Catherine started with £400. After paying auction costs, they sadly made a small loss of £13.84, ending their trip with £386.16. Judy and Phil also kicked off with £400, but they pulled in a profit of £22.54, meaning that they are crowned today's winners, finishing with £422.54. All profits go to children in need. Well done. Yeah! <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. No, I mean, it's not important. It's just about taking part. It's not exactly. That's, that's all we think. But it's the fun. More? Yeah. Yes! yes! You've got to make tea now, haven't you? I've got to make tea for six months. Yes. Bad luck, old chap. And on that note, it's time for our celebrities to bid a fond farewell. Bye! Toodaloo. <laughs> God bless. Bye! Bye! So to see you again. It's just been wonderful. Yeah, it's an excuse to have a nice drive in the country in an yeah. old car. Should we I'd do it again? Have, I'd love to do it again. We yeah. could do it next week. <laughs> It's been enormous fun, though, hasn't it? It's been fabulous. I've really enjoyed it. Safe travels, celebrity road trippers. <laughs>